Welcome to sixth grade history. This is for lessons 142 and 143. We're looking at pages 271 to 280, and there's a comprehension check on page 277 and page 280 as well. Okay, and tomorrow the lesson is um, doing some chapter checkups and there is a quiz. Um, so make sure that you study for the quiz. But if you don't get everything done today, if you it's taking you a long time and you want to push something to tomorrow. Tomorrow's a really easy day to leave a couple, some of the reading or some of that for tomorrow. Just make sure to check with your parents and know what pages to study for that quiz because um, I have them in, in the paperwork that I sent them. So um, you also have the map skill sheet 39 and 40 that you're doing with this. Um, 40 is for lesson 142 and 39 is for lesson 144. So um, they're a little reversed, but that's, that's the way it fell. So um, I'm gonna ask a couple questions and then I'm gonna get into explain to, to talking about, to teaching the lesson and um, then let you know what to do from there. Okay, what country is the Southern neighbor of the United States? What country is the southern neighbor of the United States? Mexico. And what was the capital of the Aztec Empire? This was a hard name to, to say. Capital of the Aztec Empire. Tenochtitlan. Tenochtitlan, okay. Um, there's several, gonna, there's gonna be several difficult names to, to pronounce um, because Spanish is none, I don't think it's any of our native language. We're all, we all speak, have spoken English since we were little. You may have learned some Spanish and that'll be great and, and learning more is a good thing, but um, some of these names are probably a little difficult. Um, the, be, the easiest thing with that is to watch for the accents because whatever it puts an accent mark over, that's what you, Say. So the Spanish explorer that discovered Mexico was Hernando Cortez. And you see the little accent mark over the E in Cortez. So that's why I say Cortez and not Cortes um, or Cortes. Cortes. So that Cortez is how you would say his name. Okay. So I've got his name right here. I'm going to tilt this just a little bit so you can read all of the words. Um, hopefully, read them. Uh, Montezuma was the Aztec emperor, um, and so he was the, the leader there, and he gave Cortez and his men gifts of gold and silver. Um, they had never seen white men before, so they actually thought they were gods, and so that's why they gave them gifts. Um, but um, Cortez had gone to find gold and silver, and when he received it, um, he he wasn't satisfied though with that. And so he, um, he conquered Montezuma and the Aztecs with the help of some enemies of the Aztecs. And be, because of Cortez, Mexico became a Spanish colony. So that's how, how they became a Spanish colony and not um, an Indian the Aztecs, okay? So the Mexicans served Spain for the next 300 years. Then they revolted in 1810. Mexican, Mexico won their independence um, in 1921 and set up a new government in 19, or in 18, sorry, 1821. 1846, the U.S. and Mexico fought a war over the control of the Texas Territory, which was held by Mexico. And the war ended in 1848 when the U.S. paid Mexico for the land. So that's kind of a brief summary of what's happened, how... Mexico came to be the independent country that it is and the shape that it is. Um, and so then we're going to look at some different locations in Mexico. There's the Yucatan Peninsula and the Baja and Baja California. Those are the two large peninsulas. Um, and if you look at Mexico, it kind of is shaped like a cornucopia. Um, that's the horn of plenty is what that, that the cornucopia is. Um, that you might see around Thanksgiving. And so um, those peninsulas are part of um, part of Mexico, as you can see on the map. 
And then the Rio Grande is the river, the, it means great river, um, that forms the border between the U.S. and uh, Mexico. Um, there's the Isthmus of Tehuantepec, um, and that is, let's see. That is only 137 miles. It separates the Gulf of Mexico from, oh, from the, from the Pacific Ocean. So they're down, um, so if you go south of the Yucatan Peninsula and look there still in the orange section, there's the Isthmus of Tehuantepec. So that, that little section of, of land is the only thing that, that separates the Gulf of Mexico from the Pacific Ocean, okay? And so that's um, the, one of the larger cities near that is, um, I was trying to pronounce this before, um, Cita, Citlautepetl, Citlautepetl. Um, that's, that was, um, there's actually, oh, it's not a city, I'm sorry. It's a dormant snow-capped snow volcano. Um, that is right above the isthmus of, of Tehuantepec. So we're, we have several uh, mountains we're gonna be looking at. So you've got your main mountain ranges, the Sierra Madre Occidental that runs on the outside of Mexico on the Pacific Ocean side. And then the Sierra Madre Oriental that runs on the Gulf of Mexico side, okay? Um, so there's, there's ways so if you do it alphabetical, Occidental will be on this side, and then Oriental will be on this side. So um, there's different ways to remember that, but that is one thing that you're gonna need to, to know. Um, there's the Mexican Plateau that, is, that runs between them, as well as the Chihuahuan Desert is in between um, those two mountain ranges. Um, the, the two other famous volcanic mountains are is tac is tac -si or white woman and popa 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 <laughs> this these are these are very difficult i'm i'm telling you popa kata popa kata popa kata meaning smoking mountain, Popocatapetl, okay? They are both more than 17,000 feet high. And so that's, that's their, um, those are the two other famous volcanic mountains. And um, the Mexicans, Mexicans highest point is that first one, um, Citlautepetl, okay? Um, I'm sure you're getting a kick out of hearing me pronounce these words. You could just um, try to pronounce them for me later and then we'll see who's laughing. <laughs> um, we'll both be laughing, I'm sure. Um, the capital city is Mexico City. And so um, that's right, um, it's below the, the Mexican plateau near the bottom of it, um, still between the, the two mountain ranges. There's lots of climate, different climates in Mexico because it is so vast and um, so widespread. The Tropic of Cancer runs through the middle of Mexico. So half of the country lies in the tropics and half in the temperate zone. The northern half is mostly desert. You've got the Chihuahuan Desert, Sonoran Desert, um, which is semi-desert. Um, and then you've got the, in the south, less tropical jungles. It's got the Caribbean coastal plain. Um, and so then the mo some of the most colorful birds live in that area. Um, the, the altitude affects Mexico a lot as, as you can, as you'll be reading there. Um, you're gonna, I'm gonna have you read the page on 272 about the Spanish language on your own and just, just see if you can pronounce all of those um, and, and follow the, those, um, pronunciation keys there to help you with that. Uh, but we're gonna move on to the natural resources. Um, silver and gold are, of course, um, 
big natural resources there. There's also petroleum. Um, it's Mexico's greatest natural resource. Um, you'll be reading about the different types of uh, plant life that's there. Um, so the flora is what is what plant life is. Um, and there's more than a thousand types of, of cactus plants. Um, there's the, the desert plant candelia, um, and that actually means little candle. So it sounds kind of like candle, right? Um, but that means little candle. Um, and it's, it is, they have many thin pencil-like stems that are coated with wax that help conserve its moisture. So then they boil off the wax and sell it for shoe polish and car and floor wax, candy and crayons. <laughs> um, so then, you know, there's lots of different types of flowers, azaleas, chrysanthemums, geraniums, orchids, and poinsettias. Um, there's a lot of forests in Mexico as, as, as you, you can see some of that. Um, there's that sopadilla tree. It oozes sap and it's a major ingredient in chewing gum. Um, and so then you've got tropical forests and pine forests um, and you'll see what is on that. But fauna, if flora is the, is the plant life, fauna is the animal life. And so there's lots of different animals. Um, there's, um, those are, that's, that's farther on. Um, there's different birds, the macaws, parrots, turkeys. Um, there's the quetzals, flamingos, hummingbirds, herons, pelicans. And so um, they have a lot of different types of animals, and, but a lot of the things, um, they do have alligators, jaguars, opossums, rodents, monkeys, armadillos, um, tapirs, anteaters, pumas, and wolves um, also live there. And so um, you'll see like what, what different animals live in the different regions of Mexico, but those, um, the birds are, are a big, um, a big part of their culture. They actually worship the birds, use their feathers for decoration and trade, and and eat the meat, and so, um, so you'll see that. Uh, the, in Mexico today, there the main three main groups of people are Indians, Europeans, and mes, mes, mestizos. Most Mexicans are mestizos, a mixture of Indian and European an ancestry, and so. They have, you know, they intermarried with, with people that had, had moved there. And so that's what most Mexicans are. And um, they, in their city, they have over 16 million people in Mexico City. And um, in 2000, it was the third largest city in the world. Um, Paracutan there, that of special interest, I'll let you read that about um, that volcano um, and some different things about that. And then um, the other large cities, there's Monterey um, and it's the center of the steel industry. There's Guadalajara. It's a, it's a big tourist spot. Um, Mexico, Mexican cities are built around a central area called a plaza. And so the plaza would be the public meeting place. They would probably have like a fountain. In many of those cities, they have a statue of a, or the, the villages, they would have a statue of, um, I, I forget his name. There, there's, a, there's a famous statue that, that is in many of those villages. Um, but the, they have, uh, because of their climate, most people in the village eat a large meal about two o'clock in the afternoon and then they take a nap or a siesta um, be, because in, that's the hottest part of the day and they don't wanna be active in the hottest part of the day because they can 
and you, you know, overheat and, and there's problems. And so that's what they've done for many years. Um, you've probably had some, some different Mexican food, tortillas. Um, they, Mexicans raise cattle, chickens, turkeys, hogs, uh, all for meat. Beans are used in chili and as a filling for tortillas. Um, they've got a lot of spices. And so some things just, some things are really like probably too spicy for me and some things um, just, just add that flavor. And so um, they've got uh, fruit juices, hot chocolate, milk and coffee are their favorite beverages. Um, many of the men wear uh, the, the traditional Mexican clothes are wool or cotton and they'll wear a sombrero with the wide brim to protect from the heat. Um, and then uh, the women wear cotton blouses, full skirts, um, and then they have like ponchos that they can wear. That's that triangle shaped um, wool cloth. And um, they, there's also a serape that is worn over the shoulder during the day. Um, and at night it can be used as a blanket. And so they have, they have a lot of things that are multi-purpose, um, which is very, very good. Uh, for recreation, they ha would have their big celebrations are called fiestas. And then they have um, bullfights. Children play with the pinata, the game, and then there's other um, things that they, they enjoy, some of the sports that we enjoy as well, you'll read about. Their government has a democratic form of government with a president and other national off officials. Um, it has great power over the people though, um, unlike the US and the, their government has taken away um, private farms and, and other things that they deem that the government needs. And so that's not as, as good. Um, recently, however, they have been allowing more people more freedom to own land, uh, make their decisions and some choices. Um, and so there's, there's some threats um, from communism in there, but um, that, that has been a recent good, recently a good thing. Um, Central America is the, what, the region below that and the, the countries of that are Belize, Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, and Panama. And we've looked at those on the map, but then we're gonna look at them a little bit closer here. Um, lake Nicaragua is the largest lake and unlike on, on the, um, in this region, in, in all of Central America, and unlike other freshwater lakes, it's the home of certain animal species, such as sharks and swordfish that are usually found only in the ocean. Um, there's two long rivers, the San Juan and the Coco are the two long rivers in Central America. Um, the Mayas built the first greatest civilization of the Western Hemisphere, um, and they lived on the Yucatan Peninsula, which was part of, uh, and, and part of Guatemala and Belize um, for a long time, and, and long before the Toltecs and the Aztecs came about. Um, you're gonna read about the Mayans and their, um, just some different things they built at Chechen Itza on the Yucatan Peninsula. Um, tourists can see the ruins of the Mayan temple, observatory and stadium. And so those are things that, that structures that are still standing today that can be seen. Um, they have many natural resources like coffee, bananas, cacao, which is where chocolate comes from, cotton and sugar. And um, the main export item from this region is coffee. Um, and so I know I enjoy coffee, but um, you guys are still younger, but some of you might like coffee. Um, <clears throat> There's different wildlife in this region, the, the jaguar um, and the jaguar rundi, 
Uh, so the jaguar is the largest cat native to the Western Hemisphere. And the jaguarundi is one of the smallest wild cats in the Western Hemisphere. Um, and so that's, that's an interesting thing that their names are so close and that there was probably on purpose. Um, they might, they probably look similar. Um, the squirrel monkey um, is in this, there's five kinds of monkeys in Central America. The squirrel monkey, um, the durukuli, durukuli, the capuchin, the spider, and the howler monkey. Um, the durukuli is the only one that is nocturnal, active at night of these monkeys. Um, and it actually makes a good family pet just for that. Um, the, the, the coati is a small tree dwelling mammal. It's kind of like a raccoon uh, or a ring tailed cat. It's got a very long tail and long flexible snout. And then the reptiles that we would see, um, the caiman, it's a type of crocodile, um, and the common iguana. A bushmaster is a large poisonous snake, and so that's another reptile in this area. Then the birds, we know um, the toucan is, is the, the most distinguished um, by their colors. And so there's lots to read in that. Um, so I'm gonna let you guys um, go ahead and read that. And don't forget to do skill sheets 39 and 40 and answer those two comprehension checks on paper. If you don't finish this, you can save some of it for tomorrow's lesson and then you can do, um, cause tomorrow's lesson doesn't have as much. So just um, do well and if you have questions, you can always let me know and we'll see you next time.